one very vintage bike, one modern bike race. Is this fast enough to stop me getting dropped? I actually have no idea and I'm pretty scared to find out. This bike is an exact replica of the very bike that the greatest cyclist of all time, Eddie Merckx, used to annihilate the field at the 1969 Tour de France. Custom made frame out of Columbus's finest steel, Campagnolo's five speed Nuovo record group set, hand laced wheels with hand stitched tyres. I mean, it's a thing of beauty in the right light. We made it for a GCN Plus film to find out just how good bikes of that era were and we built it using box fresh 50 year old components. I then tried to recreate Eddie Merckx's most legendary Tour de France exploit and that nearly finished me off. Now though we are going for something shorter and altogether more violent. Right up the Cannibal Street though we're going bike racing. This is the type of bike racing I love. It's local, just a mile from GCN Megabase. It's accessible, it's grassroots, it's put on by lovely volunteers, and even the weather is gorgeous. I'll stop short of saying it's relaxed, although to be fair, many people are. They're smiling and some are even laughing. For me though, I just feel a bit anxious. You know, I always do before a bike race. Even having spent 10 years as a pro, I come up here and I feel a little bit intimidated, but this bike is making it far worse. I know it is not as fast as my modern road bikes. The question is though, is it good enough to stop me getting dropped? I'm gonna have to change gear six or seven times per lap. And with these down tube shifters, that ain't gonna be quick. Although I can probably live with that. I'm also more concerned about this, I'm racing in a baggy wool jersey that's gonna cost me a gazillion watts. But worst of all is these, my toe clips. I have a genuine concern that I'm gonna be getting dropped on the start line because I simply can't get into my pedals. I mean, literally I have nightmares about that. So uh, I'm not gonna warm up, I'm just gonna practice getting into my pedals. But I've gotta say, I'm letting this bike down as much as it's potentially going to let me down. Eddie Merckx was always immaculate. I look like I've been dragged through a hedge backwards. I haven't shaved my legs in six months. I have two days with a bum fluff on my face. That would have appalled Merckx. And I'm in desperate need of a haircut. So uh, I think we're probably as bad as each other. Aero jersey, 20 watts. Aero wheels, 25 watts. Aero frame, 20 watts. Oh, I'm proper nervous, I really am. This is gonna be a nightmare. I brought a knife to a gunfight. Thanks. <laughs> well, at least I've got some style points. Right. Jason will be in front of you for the whole of the first lap. Oh my goodness. Just like if you're on a road race, you'd have a lead car. You've got Jason today. You must not pass him on the first lap. It's to get everybody steady and riding and comfortable. Well, that wasn't nearly as bad as expected. Into my toe clip first time and not even dead last by the time I'd tightened the straps. Without doubt though, I had got incredibly lucky with the race being neutralized for that first lap. But what would happen when the race got going for real? The pace was pretty hot from the outset and immediately I noticed an issue with the bike. On the back straight, I simply didn't have a big enough top gear to be able to hold the wheel in front. 
Only having five gears, you have to choose if you want climbing gears or sprinting gears, and I had forgotten to change it over from my Pyrenean Epic last year. Not something you would have to worry about on a modern bike these days. As for those down tube shifters, I was dealing with them pretty well. There was just one corner where I needed to shift midway through, and it scared my pants off, frankly, but it was doable. Surprisingly, though, I was still hanging in there, having to use my racing experience to stay up at the front and trying to make life as easy as possible. that I accidentally put in a little attack. Then frankly, it was like hitting a brick wall out there in the wind. A bus would have had better aerodynamics than me, and I simply didn't have the power to last more than a fairly humiliating half a lap. As the race wore on, I was almost able to forget the bike and just get stuck in. Almost, but not quite. The toe clips were giving me really sore calf muscles. Bizarrely, they were so sure I was stuck pedalling with my toes. Without doubt, this was actually the toughest part of riding the bike. I'd made it this far, but when the pace started to lift in the final laps, would I be able to stay in the mix and stay in the right position? I was having to gamble on a sprint, except that I can't sprint, but even on a good day, on a good bike. So fingers crossed. I survived. I survived. Well, we survived. Ah, oh, my word, we survived. Totally dodged a bullet at the start with that neutral lap. Oh my word, I was so worried about getting into my toe clip. And that meant I was able to do it without panicking. And then, once I kind of got into the swing of things, I realized I wasn't gonna get dropped and I was just able to race and enjoy it. Uh, every time I got to the front, it was like hitting a brick wall, but to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure it's the same for everyone. No one managed to get much of a gap in that race. So that was cool. The biggest difference, honestly, because well, you can't really feel aerodynamics, so I don't know about my jersey stuff. The, the down tube shifting, that was okay. I just didn't really change gear very much. When you've only got five, you might as well just leave it in the one you got. But it was the toe clips, oh my word. Like my calves are so sore, basically been pedaling with my toes the whole time and not being able to pull up properly. It kind of hamstrung me a little bit, kicking out of corners and things. So I was just having to surf wheels and use my, use my race craft, you know. Um, no, I blagged it. I'm delighted. Probably didn't do any Mercs proud, but I got stuck in, gave it a go. Having had a bit of time to think now about my experiences tonight, I've got to say, racing back in the 60s and the 70s, it was far more egalitarian. There were no marginal gains. Everyone had access to effectively the same equipment. And it was like that for decades, not until the 80s really, when exotic materials like carbon fiber and aluminium and lycra revolutionized the sport. Actually, technically lycra was the 70s, I think, but who's counting? However, my conclusion from today is that whilst equipment does matter, it's not the be all and end all. Racing tonight reminded me that if you're smart about things, you can totally get stuck in. That might be being smart with your budget and the upgrades and the equipment that you can afford, or it might be being smart with your race tactics and not launching an attack after 20 minutes of a 45 minute race like I did earlier on. And so, the moral of the story for me is that if you want to try racing, just go and get stuck in because it's great. And it doesn't matter what you're riding, you'll have a wicked time. So there we go.
I think Eddie Merckx would be proud of that too. Right, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to GCN as well, and we'll see you in the next one.